well searched. That's how Commander William Marks of the U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet describes the area the U.S. has been asked to cover by Malaysian authorities for any sign of Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370. There are 40 ships and nearly as many aircraft from the U.S. and other countries around the world looking for wreckage, but the search area is vast and growing as officials grapple with new clues that suggest the plane may have veered off course. When looking for what could be small pieces of debris, how do you search thousands of square miles of water? It helps to have a P3C Orion. The US, Australia, and New Zealand are using these radar-equipped planes able to detect from 5,000 feet objects as small as a basketball. The P3C employs what's called the parallel search method, following the same pattern as a lawnmower. During a nine-hour sortie, it's able to cover around 6,000 square miles, the size of this box on the map. What about helicopters? The U.S. uses the MH-60 Seahawk helicopter. Searching from an altitude of one to 3,000 feet, its forward-looking infrared radar covers a 20-mile-wide swath. Over the course of a three-and-a-half-hour sortie, it's capable of scanning four to 600 square miles. What its radar can't do is pick up objects below the water's surface. After five days, would objects from an aircraft disaster still float? The former vice chairman of the U.S.'s National Transportation Safety Board, who oversaw the investigation into the crash of TWA Flight 800, says yes. People were finding things weeks afterward, uh, long distances from there. You found it pretty astounding that they haven't found anything yet. You'd think that there would be pillows and seats. There is no precedent to anything even close to this. Are more aircraft needed? Commander Mark says in terms of air assets, they've reached the saturation point and are now searching further and further away from flight MH370's planned route. That's the short answer.